This training video covers exciting new resource management interfaces on the London version of ServiceNow. This video is appropriate for both project and resource managers, since these disciplines will have far greater capacity for collaboration with the new interfaces. We'll first cover how the collaborative interface works for both parties. Then we'll cover the new concept of partial allocations. And finally, we'll explore the new allocation workbench for resource managers. The first thing you're going to want to do to reach the new collaborative resource management interface is open up a project in the project console. So here I have a project on my screen and I'm just going to scroll down until I see my related links and then I'm going to click the project workbench. Once I'm on the project workbench, I'm going to click the resources tab and now we're at the new and improved London interface for resource. The top of this interface is for listing out the resource plans associated with this project. The bottom interface is used for helping find groups, users, or roles that we can convert into resource plans. It's also the interface that resource managers will use to confirm and allocate resources. There's a lot of useful information on projects and resource plans and a very limited amount of space to squeeze it into. So what you can do is you can expand this details section and that gives you the full details of the resource plan or you can collapse it and you just get the most important information, which is who the resource plan is for, how much it is planned for and its current state. You can also change the way dates and times are expressed. So if you wanna see this out, out by weeks instead of months, you can click the week button. If you wanna go from weeks back to month, you click the month button and additionally it's by default it's expressed in hours you can also express it in terms of ftes or person days on the far right hand side of this interface we have the totals so this will total up the amount of hours for each of the resource plans in each row and by default it's showing the planned but if we expand we can see the planned and the confirmed and allocated we also have an action bar and depending on the role you have, this can do different things. For example, if you're a project manager, you can click the actions and you can move a, project, a resource plan from planning to request. Likewise, if you are a resource manager, you can confirm or allocate or reject a resource plan from that little action bar. Back on the left-hand side, you'll notice that resource plans have a letter prefix, a U, an R, or a G. U stands for a user, R stands for a role, G stands for a group. The state column gives you an idea of what the resource plan state is in its life cycle. The planning resource plans, for example, with a gray dot beside them, have not yet been formally submitted to resource managers. Whereas the blue dot shows that the resource plan has been requested. A purple dot indicates that the resource plan has been requested and allocated. And if we had any confirmed resource plans on this project, we would see an orange dot. You'll also notice on the resource plans, a yellow triangle warning sign. This warning sign tells us that the resource plan is allocated, but only partially allocated. And if we look at the plan confirmed and allocated columns for each time period, we can see why. Here in February, we see that there are 40 planned hours but only 37 have been confirmed and allocated. What makes this interface so excellent is that now the project manager and the resource manager are looking at the exact same information in the exact same interface. Previous to this, the resource manager had a special allocation interface that wasn't as accessible to the project manager as this interface is now. Now, as a project manager, you'll be wanting to add resource plans to your projects. And there's a couple different ways we can do that with this interface. The first is using the new button on the resource plan. Click new, that's gonna bring up a kind of a pop-up window. And that pop-up window will contain all the fields that you would previously see if you're building resource plans from the tab. Another way to do this is in an exploratory fashion using the resource finder. So you can do search by group, or if you are using roles or users, you could search by roles or users. In our case, we're only doing groups. Then you can use a search group in here. So I'm gonna search for JavaScript developers, Java developers, that's who I want. 
once you get to the point where you're using, say, role management within the group, you could select a specific role if any existed, and you could even look at what users are available to that group. So I'm going to search. Now the resource finder has pulled up the group Java developers and shown us the users within that group. If we wanted to add that group to the, to the project as a resource plan, we would just highlight that group and say, add new plan. Now the Java developers appears on our resource plans. You can tell it's a group based resource plan because it's got the G prefix and it wants us to know how many hours are planned. So I'm going to say it's uh, 10 hours in February and 10 hours in March. And I'm going to hit request. Now that resource plan has been formally requested. That resource manager gets a notification and the resource manager will be popping into this form to see who they could confirm or allocate to our project. Speaking of resource managers, the resource manager is going to use the same interface in order to add users to our resource plans. So in the case of a resource manager for Java developers, they're going to see that there's 10 hours planned in February and March, and they're going to see their users availability in February and March. Now, sometimes availability isn't going to give us the best picture of what's going on for those users. So if we hit this configuration menu here, we could show all kinds of columns per month. So instead of availability, I'm going to show what's also confirmed and allocated and their percentage utilization. In this case, those users have no other confirmations or allocations, so those are zeroed out. A far more interesting case, I've picked the ServiceNow team, and we could see that these people, Dude, Denver, Dwayne, Dion, and Diane, all have low availability, high amount of hours confirmed, which has put them in the over put them way over on their percentage utilization. So the resource manager, as they are confirming and allocating resources, have a lot of intelligence available to them in order to make the best decisions for the project. I've gone back to the Java developers resource plan, and I'm going to start adding users to it. This is the only place you might feel a little bit of friction with the interface because you first have to add users in order to start altering their amount of hours. But if you add a user, ServiceNow assumes you're going to maximize that user's contribution to the project. So in the case of Isaac, I'm just going to check that box and confirm. Now Isaac has been added to this resource plan. The resource plan is now in a confirmed state, but you'll notice it used all hours against Isaac. And maybe I want to split it evenly between, say, Isaac and Petra. So in this case, I'm just going to delete Isaac. I'm going to select both Isaac and Petra and confirm. And now it's split it evenly. From here, I could split it however I want. So maybe I want a two to eight split. I'm going to give Petra two. And I'm going to give Isaac eight. And now we see that for February and March, 10 hours planned, 10 hours confirmed, and this is the split between the users. As a resource manager, if I'm happy with this, I can click on my action menu and click allocate. As a resource manager, sometimes you'll want to see information about other commitments while confirming and allocated on a specific project. You might ask, what other commitments do I have for my resource in this time interval? Because we all know resources can move around or be reprioritized. In this example, we're going to be the resource manager for the ServiceNow team. I'm highlighting a specific resource plan, then giving myself more space on the Finder helper panel. And you'll notice that each user has a drillable arrow. If I click on that arrow, I get to see what other commitments I've made for that user. So in this case, Robert Fedoric is involved in the following resource plans, which may or may not happen in the same interval. But we will see that in January and February, Robert has some time already confirmed against the two testing RP actuals. He's also got some confirmed time against the resource cost testing product. Okay, so this is, gives you a great way to see if somebody's approaching a high percentage utilization, what else do you have them on in that period? And this helps you make decisions for the resource plan you're trying to get completed for the project manager on this specific project.
So if you're a resource manager and you like the collaborative new interface on the project console, then you're also gonna love the allocation workbench. This is a workbench that's just for resource manager and it provides the best interface I know of to gauge your commitments for your teams or your users across a time frame. To get to the allocation console, you just go to your navigator bar and type in resource or allocation. And under the resource management application, you'll see a link called Allocation Workbench. And this is so useful, you may just wanna go ahead and click that star and make sure it's available in your favorites at, it, at the drop of a hat. When you first click the Allocation Workbench link, you won't have any allocation boards ready for you. We're gonna build a couple together. So the first allocation board I'm gonna build is for the ServiceNow group. Let's just say I'm the resource manager for the ServiceNow group. ServiceNow group allocations. And then I have to decide what type of allocation board this is. Is it going to be an allocation board for a specific demand or project? Is it going to be for a specific group, a specific manager of many groups? Is it going to be for a portfolio or a program? Is it going to be for a single specific resource plan? Perhaps for a, uh, for a role if we were using resource roles? Or perhaps for a single user manager? In our case, we're going to use group. And that's probably the one you'll use most often by far. So now all I have to do is select a group. This is going to be for the ServiceNow team. Click Create. By default, it takes you into the allocation workbench, but I'm going to go back and create a couple more. We're going to create a second one, this one for the Java developers team. Maybe I manage both teams. Java dev group allocations. Again, it's type of group. And we're going to say Java developers create. Now it may be the case that you're a member of a lot of groups and doing this over and over while handy is mechanically onerous and you want to get to a single allocation board that shows all groups, all users that you are in charge of. In that case, we're going to click new and instead of group, we're going to say group manager. I'm going to say my group allocations and the group manager is going to be Robert Fedoric. Create. Now, you'll notice that these are color-coded by the type of allocation board that they are. So that's a handy dandy way of figuring out what the basis for the board is just by looking at it. For this example, we're gonna look at the ServiceNow group allocations. I click into that board and we have a very familiar interface. This is basically the same interface that we saw on the project console resource tab, but it's got a few tweaks that makes it especially handy for resource managers. The first is, remember, this, this allocation workbench has a single criteria, a group, the ServiceNow group. And so what it's done is it's taken all the resource plans that the ServiceNow group is involved in, and it's grouped them by the project. And we can see we have some in allocated, some in confirmed, some in requested. And maybe we say the allocated resource plans aren't interesting to me. I've already committed the resources. The resources may already be working. That doesn't represent work that I have to do as a resource manager. How can I get rid of those? Well, there's a filter over here and it has the first letter of each state of a resource plan. So we have allocated, confirmed, requested, and planned. And so if I say remove allocated and add planned, that will change the list of resource plans that we see on our workbench. So we'll no longer see allocated, but we are seeing planned. This might be handy so you can anticipate resource plans that are coming from project managers that haven't been formally asked for. You. Just like in the last interface, you can visualize it by week and month, or you can quantify it by hours, FTEs, or person days. You can also change the duration of the slider to capture a wider or narrower timeline. But let's say I actually want to work on one of these. So this is confirmed and I want to make sure that I have all my allocations in, or I, I want to make sure that it's fully confirmed and not partially confirmed. And I want to actually start adding users to that resource plan. And it, mechanically, it's exactly the same as the last interface. I would simply highlight a user and I would confirm them to the resource plan. So this is the single best interface for you looking at, looking at all your resources and seeing your commitments across the timeline and take action on those commitments all on the same interface. And the fact 
that you can separate those by say areas of interest, meaning each individual groups or all your groups in total, make this a really excellent addition for resource managers in the London version of ServiceNow. Key takeaways, the collaborative resource interface allows project managers and resource managers for the first time to see the same data in the same spot at the same time. The grid view of that data is a lot richer and easier to use for both the project manager and the resource manager. The new concept of partial allocations allows us to easily see and track resource plans that have not had the same level of confirmation or allocation as requested. And the allocation workbench provides an excellent means for resource managers to get their arms around the commitments that they have in place and action the data in the same interface.